the main thing about uh, Henry uh, is his, the atmosphere uh, that he puts into his paintings. And when I mean atmosphere, I'm not, not just talking about the actual sort of, um, you know, the feeling that you get. Uh, it's the, the way he represents a, a body of air. Okay, so you can see what uh, we're going to do. And uh, we're going to start out with the usual uh, palette, which I'm going to show you in a moment. So here, here's the palette, usual, titanium white, cadmium yellow, pale hue, permanent rose, cobalt blue, uh, burnt umber, and ivory black. So I'm going to start out with a burnt umber wash. I'm, I've put a little bit of red into it. I want it to look more like a, uh, a burnt sienna wash, which is redder than burnt umber. Okay, so I'm just making up that milky sort of uh, wash. Tamp it down. Okay, and we're going to start with a drawing. I'm gonna, this is a slightly bigger canvas than uh, I've, you've been seeing me paint on hitherto. So I'm just gonna um, load up that, that one inch brush, okay, with a bit of burnt umber to do my drawing. So, <clears throat> the thing about Paul Henry uh, also is, is he allowed plenty of room for his skies. Okay, so, I mean, my, my uh, landscape is actually not the same as this. I'm just going to sort of make it more like the photograph. Okay, so it's, it's squared in that. So I just want to make sure that I don't put up the, the horizon too high, all right? Because it's really, the, the, it's the atmosphere and the, and the clouds that sort of make a, a, a Henry painting, I think. So, so about, that's about a third, isn't it? So let's, let's draw a line around about a third there. And I'm going to go all the way across there because I'm going to continue the, uh, the painting beyond these sort of markers that I have. Okay. Uh, the, it's kind of a, a higher portion of this here. You can't see that. I can, I can, I can see that because uh, I'm, I'm working off my phone. That dark bit there just continues on a little bit. There's a kind of a big, uh, there's a hump here, which is kind of quite near us. And then there's the, the mountain beyond. It's one of the 12, 12 bends, I think. And there, and that leaves us all this room f for the clouds. He's kind of saying something, isn't he? Uh, about, because he painted the same thing, essentially, many, many times, you know, these, Mayo and Connemara scenes. He seemed to be fixated on the, these monumental clouds. Okay, so in reality, this part comes up here. So we've got um, we've got essentially our our mountains there. This kind of comes up. I was just there's a sward green there, and then this kind of comes up around about here and then there's darks here okay yes yeah, something like that there are darks now i'm going to do that that's a that's a, a drawing that's what we have but i'm going to do a kind of uh, this notan uh, business and if you weren't with me the last uh, time i mentioned notan and notan is um it's a Japanese word. It's just for a, a kind of a dark and light uh, schematic of your of your the painting that you're going to do. It's essentially the design of the of the painting, and it's just kind of a good way to to find out to know that you've got the thing in the position that you want it to be in. It's kind of like a an underpainting. It's between a drawing and an underpainting, I think. It's useful, especially when you're out uh, in the field painting, which I sincerely hope you manage to do this year. Okay, so yeah, that'd be nice. And then 
<clears throat> you can't really see. You can see the clouds are, are those the, those ones that you know just sort of uh, they're milky white and they just sort of go around there. Little kind of clouds, but poor Henry must have must have been out in all kinds of weathers because they they are a huge and and we can sort of say that we want to do our clouds like that. This is the thing people often ask me sort of well you know I always have difficulty with clouds. You can sort of monumentalize them, I suppose. You don't have to paint the clouds that are there. You paint the clouds that you want to be there. Okay, and I, I would imagine that. Um, Paul Henry did a lot of sketching out in the outdoors, but finished the paintings indoors. It looks like he finished the paintings indoors. The, the atmosphere is here. You see it in these, in these kind of uh, uh, blue mountains that he, he painted. So everything in the foreground was kind of dark and warm. And then suddenly we, it would all go sort of um, blue. Now you look up at the sky and it, is, it seems to be blue. And I suppose, I suppose it is blue, isn't it? Uh, and so... That's why things turn blue as, as they go distant. And that's what we're going to do. Right, so here we go. So we got, I'm going to start out with um, the darks as usual. You see those darks running across the, the top of this uh, area here. I'm going to change brushes to this one. That's, uh, I think it's a number six. It's a number six. It's spread out a little bit, but it's a number six uh, filbert brush. So I'm just going to get some burnt umber. bit of oil and I'm going to paint where I see those darks. I just noticed something here. There is a more more mountain there. Okay. Okay. That's the sea there and then Okay, that goes up there like that. Those are all rocks. Okay. There. Move that down a wee bit, or move it over, sorry. Okay. Right, and all this sort of business here, it's quite, it's quite red. So I'm going to mix up some uh, burnt amber plus permanent rose and yellow. Average that out. So this is blocking in just the same way as you would do in a, a still life, okay? Okay, it's reasonably sort of uh, lean paint in the sense that uh, it's, 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 not, it's not viscous and, and thick. I've lengthened it with a bit of oil. I'm going to put in that green which is uh, here, uh, blue, yellow, and a little bit of red. I'm gonna put that in across there. Okay. And then that goes across the top of, of this part as well. Comes down there like that. The mountains, the nearer mountain, it's very blue indeed. Mass that in. This is averaging out as usual. Behind it, there's uh, more mountains which are even paler again, so I'm adding white into the mix that I've already made. Put them across there. Averaged out, as usual. Now the sky, I'm going to start out 
I should do a bigger brush, uh, by, by just averaging out the whole thing as a very light blue. I made a blue and white mix that's paler again than what we have here. And just, this is just the averaging out of the entire sky. This is a, a you know, stretched canvas that I gessoed myself. The gesso is very good gesso, but it, it kind of requires a bit more sort of, um, a bit more application. It's a deeper canvas. The tooth is uh, stronger, if you see what I mean. Each little sort of undulation in that cloth is deeper than the usual stuff that I've used. See here, we're, we're planning out the actual color scheme so that we can work into it. A lot of painting seems to be about sort of uh, putting down the average uh, of the colour and the tone and then working the details into it. Once this goes on, the painting will move faster because it, it, it will be slicker. We've got a base from which to work now. So let's go back to the other brush. See, and there's, you see there, there are kind of um, posts there. That'll all be towards the end. You don't start putting them in now. There are little lights sort of where that, there are rocks actually, where, where the um, horizon meets the, the mountains there. Okay, but they go in. Okay, so I'm going to add in some details into that, uh, that foreground, this part here. give the impression of stuff that's going on there. Remember, if you, if you were just standing there in this particular field, you'd have the, you'd have the midges at you for a start. So you'd have to be working fast. But this is essentially a studio painting. I'm, I'm Pretty convinced. I, I didn't. I couldn't see any references to it, but I'm pretty sure that he he did these paintings. A lot of it in the studio. Okay. I could be wrong. Maybe it's his color blindness sort of uh, affected uh, his uh, his vision and made the paintings uh, the way they are right from the outset. Could be. Could be that too. Okay. Got some colour variations in there. Let's put some green in there because this is a natural environment. They're reeds, there's lots and lots of reeds. The great thing about sort of studio paintings, you can actually, and it's something that you, sh you should do, uh, you know, after doing lots of uh, plein air painting and painting still lifes and everything, you should just uh, make stuff up based on, on your experience. Let's do something with those, uh, those darks around here because they could be expressed as a kind of a, a darkish reddish blue, really. A lot of those rocks there, let's put them in like that. to the corner of that mountain there.
rocks in there. And then it, there's a kind of a step, step down to there. Because so now we've got some uh, shadows in. Let's put in some more tonal variations. Cover this. up a wee bit higher. Let's do uh, some of this mountain here. There are some, there's some warm, the, the sun is obviously over this side. Sun is over this side. So uh, I'm going to put in some variations. Got to get that, that bluish color. This is a uh, very subtle I hope you can see it on, uh, you've probably, yeah, I can see it on my computer screen. So it's just sort of subtle variations to denote that there's uh, tonal variations in that, that mountain. Coming down here. These could sort of be added to later along here as well. We'll cut the mountain into shape later. Okay, so we've got these uh, ones behind. We can do a bit more with those. And here too. It's higher. Now, the sky. I'm going to put in some some yellows. Because Irish skies are nothing if not interesting. Okay. So, especially as it comes down towards the horizon. shape these areas here. And a few pinks. So this is oils, like because you've got plenty of, of movement uh, in that paint long after you've applied it. So don't worry about sort of you know don't 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 worry about sort of leaving it and then it's a, it's unworkable. It won't be. This will. So we'll go on and on. And as long as you don't make radical changes, you know, really radical changes, like going from blue to a um, to a red sky or something like that, you'll be you'll be fine. Okay. Let's do something with. Uh, these this area here and the whole point of course is to paint your own painting you can sort of uh, take what you want from from somebody like uh, Paul Henry but the idea is that you make it your own so put that there coming across there Let's bring some of that into there as, again. OK. 
Okay. Okay, so we're down there. Let's bounce around again to the mountain. Let's shape these, uh, uh, these rocks a bit. The other thing is uh, about, uh, about all these Paul Henry paintings, you need to see the originals because it's like when I went to see, um, I went to see uh, uh, Edward Hopper, an exhibition in, the Tate, uh, in, in London, and uh, the, the paintings were a lot bigger than you would have, uh, than I expected. And not only that, it's just that they were um, they were a lot rougher than I expected. You know, there was uh, you know, big brush strokes on them, and everything. Because every time that you look at them on on either the internet or in a magazine or something, they're they're very sort of um, very refined, smooth, even paintings. But that's because they've been reduced. See how they actually painted it makes a big difference. Um, you know, you'll you'll probably look at them and say, oh, all right, okay. I was worrying about. Uh, sort of uh, blending everything and, uh, and making it sort of like the ones I see in the magazines, but uh, they're probably quite different from that. Okay, so what have we got down here? There's just more sort of, all right, so um, uh, where was I? Oh yes, just around here, I just want to. all that up for, for the moment and there's some sort of bluish notes in in the rocks here just to we want to show that the rocks are facing uh, the sun as well I, I'm actually putting those in in a bit of the same kind of blue as the mountain beyond it sends that further off into the into the distance Paintings grow, studio paintings grow, I think, um, much more than uh, live paintings grow. Because you start to think, oh yeah, well it would be nice if I did this or it looked like this. And, so, and that way you're allowing your, your personality to come through. Put it down up to there like that. Okay, now we're going to sort of attack these clouds a little bit. He was very good, was um, our poor Henry, and making ochre clouds. We're going to do that. So we know what clouds look like, don't we? Yeah. So now we've got a, a kind of a a contrast between the um, the blue of the sky and the, the kind of ochre, kind of moisture laden clouds. And as I come down towards the horizon, I'm going to lighten it. And now I'm using heavier paint. You may have heard this thing about um, fat over lean in oil painting and they're talking about sort of uh, doing your painting first in in a very kind of a wash we did a wash didn't we and then you sort of move up a bit and you just make a, a, a paint with a little bit of oil into it but by the end you're putting on sort of neat paint and uh, and the reason why you do it that way is because 
uh, the paints will dry at different sort of uh, speeds. And if you, uh, if you uh, um, have thin paint of a very sort of neat paint underneath, the neat paint is drying slowly, more slowly than the, the thin paint over the top. And you will end up, uh, you'll end up with a cracked painting. different types of clouds that sort of come through as well. I'm feeling a, a bit more like Bob Ross today, but uh, happy little clouds. Okay, and also you can put some blue in, more blue into those clouds, the red get those kind of bruised sort of uh, uh, looking clouds as well. And the thing about them is that you do it until it seems right to you. I think, if I remember correctly, uh, uh, any Paul Henrys that I've seen, you can't really see the... Um, I think this is what made me sort of uh, think that these were done in studio, is that you can't see the, uh, the tooth of the canvas anymore. It's kind of gone smooth. And that's because he's painted over and over and over until he felt that it was what he wanted. It's quite, there's a lot of paint on some of these paintings. mixing up a bit more ochre kind of paint. Putting tops on some of these clouds. what makes them monumental, the fact that they're rising up above the, the landscape. And already I, I put a great big gob of, of um, white paint out to use and it's starting to go already. Let's have it sort of coming lighter as it gets towards the horizon. There's a lot going on in, in, in skies. Even in blue skies, there's a lot, of, uh, a lot of things that can be going on. Let's bring that up over there. Lots and lots of paint. Don't be afraid to, 
to use paint. Put that up there. The monumental part. With all sorts of colours in there now. We've pinks, we've yellow, uh, ochre yellows, and we've blues. Okay, let's bounce back to the painting below. And let's start putting in some variations in here. Back to the um, back to the hillock and painting up there. See, these are in the foreground, so these are kind of more definite, and the the, the blue sends those into the, into the background. The, that blue and white mix. So. Bit of tonal variation there. And the other thing you've got to sort of uh, um, maybe think about is that these were painted, what, I think he, he perhaps he, he died in the 1940s, did he? Or, but anyway, a lot of his paintings were done around then. And uh, sometimes the paint fades, uh, changes over time, gets darker or gets yellower. Paintings ca can get yellower, especially if there's a lot of linseed oil in them. And so we she don't really know, I suppose, what they may have looked like when we were when, when they were fresh. I'm gonna send that mountain into the background a little bit more. Making it a little bit sort of paler. Actually I'm gonna put a little bit of red into that blue. Okay. We don't really want sort of um, definite lines either. We're going to break that up. We're going to break up that sort of, uh, you know, that uh, 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 edge between that and that. And that will send it into the, into the background even further. Definite edges come forward. Pew, pew. They come forward. Things in the front, definite. Things in the back, you just... You break up the edges so that they disappear. Also, cool things recede as well. Cool areas of colour recede. Warm ones come forward. I'm going to send those further back. I'm going to take some of the sky colour and put it into that. Because that would be logical, wouldn't it? If you take the sky colour, all that atmosphere is also, it's not only over there in the background, it's, it's all between here and right up to our faces. Uh, it's all, it's all sort of, um, the whole environment is there. It's not just in the distance. So there's a bit of logic to it. You take that sky color and you put it into the, uh, into the mix for the objects that are that far away. Okay. And again, over here, this is very pale indeed here. I'm going to take more of that sky colour, send it further back into the distance. It seems to be further back. That one seems to be further back than even that one. Okay. 
Now we're going to do some more of the areas here on that side of the mountain. And Paul Henry used to do very nice sort of little variations on, on the sides of his, his mountains to, to, to show that they are kind of, um, how do you say, you know, rocky outcrops and things like that. He had, as, as I said at the beginning, he had a, a red-green um, colour blindness. So, um, and you often see what he does is, is his mountains, they're just blues. I might try that actually. Let's have a look. It's a feature of his paintings, I think. So they'd be lighter, but lighter blue and not warm necessarily. I'll try it because this is the kind of thing that you can always do again because it's a studio painting. And keep going until you feel that it's right. here as well. That's the kind of lower slopes of the mountain. push the mountain up give it more mountainy sort of sides Now I'm going to do some more down, down here. Lighter, more ochre tones. Even lighter again, I'm going to put a bit of white into that ochre tone that I've just made. We'll do something with that, um, that green space to give it some variations. I'm going to, I'm going to break that up a little bit. That maybe it's not exactly the time to do it, but uh, it's breaking up the, the hill. Sending it further back into, to the distance.
One of my students uh, years and years ago brought a, a painting and he said, I, I bought a, a Paul Henry. I said, did you? He says, yeah, yeah, I'll bring it in to you. And he did. And it was just me and one other of the students. I was sitting in the, in the class at the end of the class and he produced this painting. And as soon as we looked at it, we just kind of both shook our heads. He said he could get his money back on it. I hope he did. But it was passed off. It had actually been signed, Paul Henry, and everything. Be careful out there. This I, I will sort of write on the back of it after Paul Henry. That's what you've got to do. That's the. It's okay to do that if you acknowledge your sources, I suppose. Back to the clouds. Okay, let's. What I liked about his paint, his clouds, with their sort of they're almost like. A child's clouds. They're all round. But I mean, what you notice is it's not like the, it's not like the one in the picture. You want them to be your own clouds. And of course, this is the kind of thing that, you know, that could, it could go on and on all day. I've done it before, sort of. Uh, the clouds are, at the beginning are completely different from the clouds at the end. That's not dark, uh, sorry, that's not light enough. I'm going to take more of the sky put it into that that blue and send it further back into that distance And likewise, the other one, even further. Let's see that comes out there a bit further. Okay, and then that means I can work on the, this mountain a little bit more. shaping that mountain a little bit more. I'm going to make more, I think, of those undulations in the mountain. But only after I've done this, put some some rock formations here. Okay. And 
there are rocks down here. That that's uh, a tumble down dry stone wall. give it uh, an impression of then there's a a light here not quite sure what it is could be a rock I don't think it's a house Going to shape that a little bit. Dark in there. Okay, there's a light in here as well. More work on the clouds. There are clouds in front of clouds in front of clouds in front of clouds. Banks of them. And this is all sort of um, worked over the initial of the light blue. Light and the see see that the how much paint is on that sort of that brush. And there's a lot of texture coming in now because of that. Just put it in where you think it needs it. And now some work on the foreground again, just to sort of give it a bit of definition. But you're not, this bit would be easy to overdo, I think. And it's not sort of, it, it's not important enough to, uh, to really make too much of it. I also think actually that it's too up and downy here. Strokes are all too aligned. So I'm going to put in some lateral strokes here. Change the sort of change the the hue of it slightly, make it more important, more part of the land. Put in some definite strokes, you know, so that it's more how to say more painterly. I think I'm going to put in a, a couple of darks again, using just burnt umber down here. OK. 
Okay. Those two stakes, they're either stakes or they're standing stones off to the left. So I'm going to put those in, so put a bit of burn timer so I can get them in how I want them to be in. About here, one there, one there. Do you know what? It'd be nice just to have a, a bunch of them in. Might do something for the, for the painting. And then the light part of them. There was something else that I wanted to do. There's a bluish shadows in that um, in those reeds. I'm just going to do this as a an experiment because it's a studio painting. We can always go back to it later. It makes more of it, I think. and brings some of the blues from here into this. Yeah, I think that works. It's hard to, to, to understand somebody who has a, was it a red-green colour blindness? It's just hard to understand. It's explaining a view to a blind man, how, how he would have um, seen things. Let's have one more go at those clouds. There's lots of paint on there, lots of texture and lots of strokes you can see. Oak, Ochreify them. Huge, great constructions of clouds. Sending that further into the background. Now, I'm just going to use this little brush. Do some more of those mountain sort of description, sort of of the ridges in the mountain.
And finally, just some work around here, just to make that sort of more. Let's see across the side here. All right, so bring it back across. Yeah, 